Wonka released in theaters in North America this past weekend. Emma Stone and Joaquin Phoenix have joined Ari Aster's next film. And Rebel Moon gets released on Netflix to very poor reviews. It is rotten on Rotten Tomatoes right now. Let's get into this week's movie news on Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. By the way, I've, I'm recovering from an illness, so I sound like I smoke 20 packs of cigarettes a day. Just a heads up. He's lying. He really does smoke 20 <laughs> packs of cigarettes a day. Don't worry. No one wants to hear you talk anyways. Let's get into the box office. So Wonka re- premiered and got released in North America. It had a European release last week, so it pulled in about $50 million. Right now, domestically for North America, it pulled in about 38 to $40 million this weekend, which is really healthy for a budget of 125 with an early international release. It's awesome news. Previous musicals the last two years made 10 and $11 million. So we have Spielberg's film and then In the Heights. So both of those had pretty low opening weekends. It was, I think, Spielberg's lowest opening weekend of his entire career, maybe. And Wonka just defied expectations with this really big opening. We're doing an episode on Wonka this upcoming week tomorrow. Tomorrow! We loved it. We recommend it for the holiday season. It's a great family film. It's just a really good, positive time. Couldn't recommend it enough. Super positive time. Too bad it couldn't help with your illness. It it didn't (laughs) didn't cure my illness. But it is delightful. And that's awesome news to see a movie like that doing so well. I can't wait to see what kind of legs it has for this holiday. Speaking of legs. Weekend coming up. Hunger Games. Still has those legs. Six million dollars again at the box office. The fifth week out in it theaters. Mo- it moved from the third spot last week to the second spot this week. Consistent, yeah, chugging it's along, crazy. just making a good five to ten mil every weekend. It's doing really well, and audiences clearly responded to this film. The, I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. The Boy and the Heron's in third place with five point one million dollars domestically, and again, this is Hayao Miyazaki's most successful film right now. And it opened for North America. It opened in 2,000 more theaters to 2,300 theaters. So it's got an even wider release this weekend. So if you haven't had a chance to see it, if it hasn't been playing near you, you definitely have one near you now. Number four on the box office, Godzilla minus one is decimating its budget and cost. Pulled in another five million dollars to the box office. Then in fourth place, we have Trolls at four million dollars to the box office. <laughs> Trolls. Trolls. Which one is that? Trolls band together. Trolls band together. Yes, they do. Sorry, you only <laughs> wrote one word for every. I didn't feel like writing all the words. You're that lazy, you can't write out Trolls band. What together. are you, Ron Burgundy? There's three words. Are you, Anthony. Ron Burgundy? You can't write out three words. You only say what's exactly written. Yes, I'm. I'm reading off a Google document for <laughs> factual information here. You know, I can't be giving people the wrong info. They're gonna Sorry, think, Ron. What Trolls movie is there? Is it tr- like evil trolls or is it animated trolls? They're going to be confused, Anthony. We all know what trolls it is. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's get you in. know what trolls it is. Let's get into the top stories. So this is really cool news. I just found this out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anthony's giving me his throat thing this <laughs> morning. throat thing. That's, that's Emma cold. Stone has joined Joaquin Phoenix in Ari Aster's next Film. Give us some details. There are no details. That's all you got? No, Ari Aster, <laughs> it was, Joaquin Phoenix joined it last month. He was in rumors about working together again, but then it was confirmed last month. And then Emma Stone just was announced joining the cast. There's no title. There's no synopsis. There's nothing at all. So they're keeping it very under wraps and close to the chest until I'm sure they start production. I think Emma Stone completely fits his cinema world really well. Obviously, Joaquin worked with him with Bo is Afraid. And you just told me the other day, this is a pretty interesting anecdote. What did I tell you? In the kitchen, you were, you were discussing things. We were discussing film. <laughs> As we do. As we do. And now we film it and put it online. <laughs> Anthony said that Ari Aster was going to direct Dream Scenario. Yes. I had no idea. So Ari Aster originally loved the script. And so the writer of Dream Scenario, it's his first film just came out this past year. Dream Scenario is his second film. And his film hadn't debuted yet, the first one he made. And so A24 and Ari Aster, they, A24 bought the script and they wanted to go move forward with it. Ari Aster was like, I'm going to make it my next thing. But then the, the writer's film did really well at a few festivals and was really well received in England where he's from. And so they were like, you can take this over. You got this. We trust you with the, the $20 million budget. Like you can handle a movie. So originally Ari Aster was going to have Adam Sandler play Nicolas Cage's role. Oh, that would have been so good. But the writer of the film and the eventual director of the movie, he always wrote it picturing Nick Cage in mind. And so they changed the casting for that. What's the box office been for? It's been pretty good. It's okay. Six million dollars at the box office for Dream Scenario, which came out, it had its release in November. Limited release in in November. Mm -hmm. And then December 8th was its wide release. It's just, yeah, not really... People are seeing it right now. That's something like. I think will do well on streaming. 
Yeah, but for like a twenty million dollar budget, they're gonna eat. Yeah, they're gonna eat some cheddar cheese on yeah. that. I mean, I haven't seen it just because it just didn't work out timing wise. With we were very busy with our super secret project when it came <laughs> out, but now um, I'm gonna see it this week because yeah. this past week we've been going to the movies a ton. We're back on our normal routine, so we have more time to go to the films. To go to the theaters. Go to the films. Go to the films. Anthony's seen like seven movies in theaters in the last 17 hours. I saw two yesterday. I know, he did. I, and, and we filmed an episode in between. Yeah, I don't stop. And I'm sick. He doesn't machine. stop me. I'm a machine. I'm a machine. Moving on <laughs> to possibly the best trailer of the year with Dune Part 2. Oh my God, this slapped. It was amazing. And I'm I'm shocked at how much bombastic action set pieces we have in this movie. Obviously, I was they anticipating it. it, but yeah, the trailer looks incredible. Oh my goodness! And modified Ratha too. Oh Little my tongue he action! Looks, the tongue action, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Fade Ratha with the tongue, man. Got a great look at Austin Butler. A little bit of dialogue as well, as well as a little more Harkonnens. Lots of Zendaya. Zendaya and yeah. Timmy taking up most of the screen time for this trailer, which I think they have to do because obviously a lot of people they they're so hot. They, they're, they're so hot. <laughs> But so many people who never read the books, they didn't understand why Chani Zendaya wasn't in the movie for the first part one that off that much, really until the end. So a lot of people were disappointed by her lack of screen time because they don't know the story. But now they get the trailer because we get to see Chani's going to be a huge character in part two. And for those of you who haven't read the book, there's something massive that they haven't even shown yet. Still hiding they still it. still haven't shown. I think there might have been a shot. Really? Of, show, of, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. There's something huge to the story that hasn't been teased whatsoever. Not, I didn't see anything, but I'll have to double check something the trailer. With the, it's something to do with the Baron, and I think I saw okay. a shot of what, right. what we're talking about, what All we're right. anticipating. Anyone's read the book, you know what we're talking about. There's a character and a casting that's just been kept secret for this entire film. It's like Matt Damon with Interstellar. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Also, <laughs> I'm sorry. Also, we got the first dialogue. Yeah, I got my, I got a, <laughs> I saw some movies this week, everybody. <laughs> Let me get another box of Marlboro's. Yeah, I got to smoke a kind of cigarettes from Costco. I got that with a box of wine last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the Costco singer. has the deals, man. They have the deals. I go to the diner afterwards, <laughs> have a slice of pumpkin pie. <laughs> I love pumpkin pie. We got the first dialogue from Christopher Walken. Oh, yes. He speaks as in, emperor. The, in this trailer. Yes, that's right. He's like, Paul, what are you doing, Paul? <laughs> I, I, I got a fever. My prescription is more spice. More, tea, more spice. <laughs> more, more spice. More spice melange. <laughs> hey, Ratha, what are you going to do here? <laughs> do something about Paul. <laughs> the the is, voice that rises yeah, right now. As, like, as we said, he was perfect casting. <laughs> <laughs> we got some Florence Pugh in there as well. Florence plays the Emperor's daughter and also Princess Erlon, same character, but... <laughs> so super he worded it. I was like, also who? I was gonna say something else, but I don't want to spoil things. Uh -huh. Like I was gonna say something that could have been a spoiler. She plays Dominic Toretto. <laughs> she drives a Dodge Charger. Spoiled. <laughs> but man, this trailer was amazing. Oh man, like when the explosion happens in the distance and the wind comes blowing in Oppenheimer style. Oh my god, it looks also epic. Definitely not a lot of new music from Hans. Yeah. We get to hear some more themes. Very excited about this. March 1st, again, is the release date. Seems for like they're June sticking to it. Yeah. If it's in this I trailer. I think it's good. Yeah. I think it's good to go. They have the whole month to themselves. Let's move on to a Netflix and Zack Snyder release. We haven't seen it yet. Like Anthony said, he's been, we've been so busy seeing movies and working on projects that... Yeah, I'm just trying to see everything in theaters before they're gone. Rebel Moon just got released on Netflix, and it's got some pretty bad reviews. It's a 24% on Rotten Tomatoes for critic score. However... The audience score is 75%. And you know, the Zack Snyder fandom comes in droves to help promote his movies. I haven't seen it yet. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews from other film Same. people and film Twitter and film talk. I am going to wait for judgment until I see it myself as someone who likes Zack Snyder's movies and really fucking loved Justice League, Zack Snyder's Justice League, as well as enjoyed Army of the Dead, which I know a lot of people didn't. This is also a 2.9 on Letterboxd right now. Yeah, but it's he's a divisive filmmaker. Yeah. And critics don't really love Zack Snyder movies, but I'm still optimistic about the movie, and I will be checking it out hopefully this week. So this film is on Netflix right now, or is this, this is just early reaction? Netflix got, came out on Friday the 15th. Really? Yeah. Because there's only 30, 380 reviews on Letterboxd. Yeah, maybe it's got to boot up. Yeah, it's gonna boot up. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> you boot it up, man. You know, there's an, in, up. There's an influx. <laughs> Anthony's afraid to do his Batman voice, I can tell. Yeah, I did. I did Light it up. up. All right, there's some really exciting Leonardo DiCaprio news. 
with no specifics at all. So he has confirmed that he has signed on to his next film. However, nobody knows what it is, and he's not going to talk about it. In the interview, it, it, he said, I've signed on, and he's, but he's, he's like, I can't say anything about it right now. There are rumors. So there's been rumors about him working with Paul Thomas Anderson for months. Ooh, I love rumors. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that was in, I mean, rumors and talks about that for like the last few months. But also, people have been saying that Paul Thomas Anderson's been writing a vampire movie. Dude, what? That's just what I've heard. Amazing. Nothing's been confirmed, but those two things have what the internet's been talking about, about PTA lately. So Leo attached to it, and then also it being a vampire movie. I wonder, would he would he dive into like the supernatural? He's never done fantasy yeah, at all. he's never done supernatural, fantasy, gothic, horror kind of stuff. I wonder. Imagine I think, if he did. That would be so oh my, good. It would be like the best vampire movie ever. I know, I'm so enticed. Well, and I mean, PTA, you can do anything and I'll watch it. But I, I guarantee you they're working together because they actually have, they're connected. He, Paul Thomas Anderson grew up knowing his family when he was younger. And then also DiCaprio's dad is in Licorice Pizza. Yeah, he's got a he's cameo. The, he's, he's the, the mattress, mattress guy. salesman. Yeah. So they've, they're, their families know each other. They're connected. You can say they're friends probably in real life. No, they hate each other. They hate each I'm other. Sure they're, I'm <laughs> They've sure they're never pals. met. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I think he fits his world as well. I think Leonardo on PTA is a is a combination that I've always wanted and I'm very intrigued to see. Yeah, same. I think that'd be great. And if it's a vampire movie, let's go. That's awesome. And hopefully they release it in the fall. Like they should. <laughs> Not the four Dracula movies that came out in February and March this year. <laughs> What about Dracula in February? Yeah, that's when people want to Don't see more. Don't this Dracula like February. <laughs> Next up, we have some Apple TV news. Alexander Skarsgård has signed on to the Whites Brothers' next project. The Whites Brothers did American Pie. And Murder Twilight. Bot. Yeah. And what? And a couple of Twilight movies. A couple of Twilight movies. They're doing Murder Bot, an adaptation of a book series. Now, this 10-episode long series follows a self-hacking security android who is horrified by human emotion but is drawn to its vulnerable clients when given a dangerous assignment. The sentient bot must hide its free will and carry it out, but all it really wants is to be left alone to watch futuristic soap operas and figure out its place in the universe. <laughs> so it sounds like it has a comedic tone. What's that? <laughs> sounds like it has a comedic tone. Is that what she said? Sounds like, and it's still bad. It sounds like it has a dark comedy to it, if, I, it yeah. like, if you like soap yeah, operas. Especially if the White Brothers going to do it. Very good comedic directors. So they're so good. They, they're great. They're, so good. they're great. All right, let's move on to some more stuff. They're all right. <laughs> we finally got some real confirmation about Heat Two. Michael Mann has confirmed Adam Driver will play Neil McCauley in the prequel sequel. I can't wait. What do you call a prequel sequel with one word? Seek a pre sequel. A seek a pre uh, pre sequel. Yeah, pre sequel. Pre sequel because it's going to act as both. Yeah. Something like that. Now I'm curious to see who they'll cast as the other characters, but this is something that's been rumored for like six months. And we all knew it was going to happen. And I'm sure they just finally signed the contracts. Adam Driver was just on the Bill Burr podcast. Oh, was he really? <laughs> yeah, I gotta watch what? it. I saw a clip on TikTok. That's crazy. I gotta watch the whole thing. Adam Driver on Bill Burr. He's really funny, though, Adam Driver. Oh, he's like hilarious. his SNL sketches, especially he was hosted the other last week, is is exceptionally funny actor. His command his career began in comedy with girls and then that Daniel Radcliffe rom com. Remember that one? Yeah. And he played the roommate, yeah. best friend. And he like that morning with the nachos, he's like I just had sex. I'm about to eat nachos. <laughs> God damn, I love my life. No, don't ruin it by saying something stupid. <laughs> it's really yeah, funny. it's true because he's been in so many big dramatic projects and blockbusters and serious films. You forget how funny he actually is, especially performances like obviously the Star Wars movies and Marriage Story stand out to people's minds and just like dramatic performances. And I think he's, he's hysterical. I think. Megalopolis is going to be huge. I can't wait for that. Yeah. And Ferrari comes out next week on December 22nd. The trailer looks good. We just saw the trailer in theaters yesterday, and it looks fantastic. We just saw the trailer in theaters. <laughs> it's fucking sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hey, they get, hey Jim, it. pass me another pack of cigs. I love the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> we have some awesome news next. And, and this involves... Get it out, man. This involves the greatest football player and quarterback of all time, Tom Brady. Which is an undeniable truth. It's a fact. Yeah, it's a fact of life. It's a fact. <laughs> He's getting roasted on Netflix, hosted by the roast master himself, Jeffrey Ross. This is really cool because it's going to be Netflix streamed com comedy event. So Netflix is a joke. Every year they have a basically a Netflix festival, a streaming comedy festival, and the roast of Tom Brady will be 
the crowning jewel, the bell of the ball for this festival will be Tom Brady's roast. And they teased with friends, so they haven't announced who else will be doing the roasting, but I'm sure Julian Edelman will be there and Gronk. <laughs> they gotta <laughs> they be. Gotta be. Oh my I bet god! Le- I bet maybe LeBron will be there too. Maybe because they're friends. I love roasts, especially when it's someone fun or interesting. I love Tom Brady doing this. It's just he's gonna get torn apart, but I love it. It's great, and also it's there's gonna, a lot of material. It's yeah. gonna be in a stadium too. It's it's a huge venue. I can't remember which one it was that I read, but it's just a massive venue. Good. Uh, it's better than like being in like a a, a banquet hall. Yeah. Sometimes there's <laughs> the like a banquet hall. hall of like a big hotel. <laughs> They're nice, but it's like, <laughs> but I love the roast, and I feel like they've lost popularity the last five years. Yeah, I mean, because Comedy Central does anyone even watch it anymore? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot it was around. Yeah, I haven't even. That's thought such about an old Comedy time Central. sentence. Yeah. Comedy Central. Does anybody watch it anymore? It sounds like a. It sounds like an old timey TV station. Well, I'm sure their time's coming because I mean, Cartoon Network went. Cartoon. <laughs> Cartoon Network went out of business last year. Oh, or this so year. Sad. Yeah, they went under. Really? Yeah. Damn. They had closed up their offices in Glendale recently. That's horrible. Yeah. God damn. But, you know, people just aren't watching cable TV anymore. And if they it's, can't it's afford it. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad. People lost no, their jobs. No, cable TV. They used to... Cable TV was horrible because you had to... You didn't get to decide what you wanted to watch. You would have to choose from... You had to, a package... It was like 150 bucks, and it was, it was whatever they said you could watch. Yeah, you had no control over what you watched, and you could either get no cable or you could get cable with six thousand channels that cost 120 bucks. <laughs> the, uh, the choice is yours. <laughs> you couldn't just do a couple of channels. That's true. That's why you streaming yeah. really took over because it gave people flexibility to choose what they wanted to watch. Yeah, because I wasn't watching TLC or TNT except for maybe basketball but like you had those act you had access to those channels but now you have to there were hundreds of channels on everyone clicked on yeah because there's no need to it's a really good point let's move on to some more news now max will be the exclusive streaming platform for all a24 films warner brothers just signed a huge deal We've been worried about A24 because... They're the only creative production company, if really. If they go there. under, Apple TV's going to buy them. Yeah. You know, they have already offered them a billion-dollar deal. It's a really smart business move. Is And as opposed to every time they have a release come out, they they try to get a bidding on licensing. Now they have the exclusive deal. I'm sure Warner Brothers paid a real p- pretty penny for this. And so this, this includes all titles. So past, present, and future A24 films will only be streaming on Max. And they already had a deal for a lot of their movies were licensed for Max, mm-hmm. and obviously their TV shows yeah. were on there. But this is awesome news for A24. I'm pretty happy about it. This is this is the first time I hear about it, so I'm pretty excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's because they, they did a good job with their couple of TV shows that I think they were happy about it. Plus, Max, they need entice to entice people. And A24 is a hot brand. They're very in demand, and people love it. And I think it's, it's the best brand in film. It really is up there. And I, I, this is pretty exciting news. So good for A24 not getting sold to a bigger production studio or tech company and just staying independent. This is awesome. Oh, yeah. Big time. Some sad news coming up. Very sad. I'm Ryan, Ryan Gosling obviously has been in talks to do The Wolfman for about 10 years he's now. He's not been in talks. He's been signed on. Has he been officially? Yeah. yeah, but they have never had a date. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not. It's really just talks if they've never even had a production going in. It's so sad. Whatever. It is sad. Yeah. So him and first it was Derek Chief France were trying to make a movie for about like eight years, and then he was gonna make it with Lee Wannell, but now Ryan Gosling is out as the Wolfman. Lee Wannell's now directing with Christopher Abbott in the title role. You most recent recently saw Christopher Abbott in Poor Things. He plays the Bella's ex Bella's husband. Yes, Bella's husband. He's arist- really good. The aristocrat. He's terrific in the movie. He's a really great actor. It's he was just, hilarious in the movie. It's yeah. just a disappointment to see Gosling. I'm sure he is very bummed about this for you know trying to get this made for ten years, and he probably just has to give up on it. I wonder why he dropped out. He probably must, timing scheduling. It could have been he maybe he already signed on to other films that were already scheduled to start. Yeah, and this one could just never get the ball rolling. What a bummer! That sucks. What a bummer. But Lee Wannell is a great choice for taking over as director because he did The Invisible Man, which is fantastic. So I have high hopes for this. Even with it's Gosling in good hands. Out. It's yeah. very good hands. I think it's exciting news, even though Gosling's not going to do it. Some more A twenty four news. We got two more stories. So they are adapt- adapting video game legend Hideo Kojima's Death Stranding into a live action feature film. The game came out in twenty nineteen, starring Norman Reedus, Maz Mikkelsen, and Leah Seydoux. And 
it's just awesome news to see Hideo. He's, he's working on another game. Obviously, we talked about him last week with Jordan Peele at the Video Game Movie Awards. OD. With OD, their latest new form of media that they've been claiming a, a new horror experience. But Death Stranding is also a very popular game he created. And this is awesome news. A24 getting to a huge live action IP. This is exciting stuff. They and Hideo's well, a great storyteller, so I'm sure he's got a lot of control of the story. Might as well cast the actors, too. They should. I mean... Why not? They, they might as well. I bet they do. That would be pretty awesome. That, that might be the first time that would ever happen, right? Where a video I, game yeah. gets adapted into live action. The people who played the characters in the game are all going to star as themselves. I can't think of that happening. I'm sure they'd ever. all want to do it. Yeah. That's pretty awesome stuff. Pretty cool. Pretty awesome Speaking stuff. Speaking of more A24 news, Benny Safdie has just announced his new upcoming solo directing project with The Rock as a lead actor. It's called The Smashing Machine, which is produced by A24, and the film will be an adaptation of the acclaimed documentary The Smashing Machine, The Life and Times of Extreme Fighter Mark Kerr. Now, he was a MMA fighter in the early days of M MMA and UFC. It chronicled the triumphs and tragedies of Kerr's life in the Wild West days of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, which was crazy, in the 90s and early 2000s. So I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, me too. I remember this guy, Mark Kerr. Because remember, the UFC was on Spike TV, right? Yeah, it was on Spike. And it was like... You Guys were still wearing geese and stuff. It, was, it really was like the Wild West. It was really... It didn't have a huge budget, but it was getting national attention. And, and even like the refs... on ESPN. Yeah, refs weren't like completely regulating... It was like, it was early days. They were still working the kinks out, basically. Yeah. It's not as regulated as, as, as it is now. It was pretty brutal and... I remember loving it when we were kids. I was like, oh my god, this this fighting championship is insane. Yeah, we'd be like, was, this guy's in a gi, this guy's not in a gi. What it is was this? brutal. I was waiting for that. <laughs> it's gotten pretty good. My brutal impression. <laughs> you gotta get a goatee so you can pull up the Josh Brolin. <laughs> you got the hair. Do I? Thanks. You have, have Brolin's hair. I guess for... Not, doing it a little shorter. I'm not just in saying the in general. Oh, in general. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I think it's like an inch shorter. <laughs> Thanks, man. Good guy. Guy. Good All right, guy. let's move into the uh, movie trailers, of which there were six huge movie trailers that came out this week. Let's start with the one that we were teased with last week on Movie News, Alex Garland's A24 film Civil War, which, by the way, is the largest budget of any A24 movie in history with $75 million production budget, Whoa. plus marketing is probably about $1. 125 and we were very skeptical about this when the poster came out and the synopsis came it out it looks better than i thought it, it does. does look better than i thought but yeah. also at the same time while I, while I was watching it i was like who wants to see this do, do people want this kind of movie and i'll obviously watch it yeah i see all of alex Collins' movies because i think he's a terrific writer and, and filmmaker i think ex machina is one of my favorite movies this century you know it's it's remarkable and obviously he wrote 28 days later annihilation's terrific as well we y'all know we didn't love men, but <laughs> he's a voice in cinema that's really unique, and that's and I respect that. Civil War. I don't love the idea, the idea of a civil war contemporary setting in the United States, and I think he kind of threw everybody off when in the trailer it's revealed that the Western Front forces, the Western forces of Texas and California are working together. The most unbelievable part of the trailer is that Texas and California agreed on anything. The only thing I can think yeah. of is like Texas took over California. It doesn't seem like it. That's because, what I, because he's not picking a side. But that's, but that's, it's ambiguous in the trailer. That's yeah. what I'm assuming. From my interpretation, it sounds like Texas took over California. From my interpretation, I don't get that at all. But also, I don't know how I feel about this trailer. I watched it and the production's great, obviously, and Kirsten Dunst, Jesse Plemons, the cast is fantastic. I don't know if this is a movie that people want, especially on this budget, on this scale. Yeah, it definitely is better than I was expecting, and it's very intriguing, and it's it, it's interesting. It's I thought it was just going to be like all-out war, um, and I thought it was going to be a, a more he's choosing sides, and it's more ambiguous, so I thought it was the smart route to go. Although I think he was stretching it with California and Texas being together. Yeah. And then also, um, I just don't, I don't see how this is going to do well at the box office. Me neither. Because it's a big It could budget. do okay, but still it has to make probably $200 million to become profitable. It's opening weekend needs to be $30 million. And also, I mean, speaking of how you just said you're not sure if it's going to pick a side, I think with, the, with some of Alex Garland's films, especially with men, the trailers are ambiguous to what he's saying, but then by, you watch the, it, by the end of the movie, you're like, oh, this is insanely biased to one direction, which I'm sure I, it will I, be. I get that, yeah. I think it probably will be, which is fine. I mean, it's his movie. You can do whatever he wants. I mean, yeah, I would say I don't mind it being on one side, but when it lacks nuance. 
We'll find yeah. out. We'll find out. We'll, we'll probably we'll obviously see it in you know a twenty four is a studio we respect and hold in high regard. I mean, kudos to them for funding this. I mean, it's a ballsy move. Not it's, gonna lie, it's ballsy. But is it a smart decision? Do pe- I, I watched? I read the comments on the YouTube. The channel. comments people terrible, are not yeah. really excited about this movie and yeah. they're confused by it. And so. I just saw it, the trailer in theaters and I could hear the people around me and it was just like everyone was like, "What was that?" Yeah. So it doesn't seem like people are going to react to it very well. That's why I don't think. I'm not sure it's going to be a strong performer at the box office. Me neither. And when's it come on? Let me check again. Is it, it doesn't say. It didn't say in the trailer. It just says 2024. Civil They might War still be picking a release a date. 24. Let me just re- release date. I thought I remember saying April. April 26th. April 26th. Okay. So it's coming out pretty soon. On a lighter tone, we got the first trailer for If, which is John Krasinski's much anticipated follow-up to the Quiet Place franchise. And it just looks delightful. This is a great family movie. It's about a, a little girl who can actually and see the imaginary friends, past and present, of people around the world. And it just looks like a lot of fun, very whimsical. Ryan Reynolds plays the co-lead. And it just looks like a good time. It looks like a great little family movie. And the CGI animation looked terrific. Yeah. Of the if if of the ifs, they call so the imaginary, imaginary friends, friends or ifs. ifs. It's yeah. really cute. It's very sweet. It looks awesome. Yeah. And obviously, cause jo- John, I almost said Kaczynski. <laughs> Krasinski's. <laughs> A great filmmaker, and we love that guy so much. It's an interesting choice after A Quiet Place to do something completely different. I bet he wants to do it for his family. Like, make a movie for my kids that they can see because he did two rated R movies. Reynolds, too. Yeah. So I think that a lot of filmmakers, a lot of actors and directors, they like to make projects for their kids, which is really cool. I mean, it's funny because you you hear interviews about stuff like that, and actors like, I did that so my kids could like me. It's like, no matter how famous you are, your kids still think you're a loser. Yeah. (laughs) They don't care. I saw a Will Smith interview. Like, they just. Call me dad. They and I'm Will Smith around the world. And everyone thinks yeah. I'm the man. But then, like, this is before the Oscar slap. And then <laughs> it's just like they're like, "Oh, dad's so lame." I'm like, "Will Smith is the coolest guy alive." Yeah. <laughs> I saw an interview with Ben Affleck. He said he used to, he he would pay his mailman to let him beat him up outside because his son really thought he was Batman. So he had to hold up appearances. <laughs> That's so amazing. They would do, every time he delivered mail, the mail, they would do a fake fight. Would he put on a mask? Uh, he, would, I think he would put on a mask and then um, he, would, he would slip him like a hundred bucks every time, I think. That's so cool. Just to make his son think he was cool. It's like Christian Bale doing gore for yeah. Thor 11 Thunder because it's something that his kids could see. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of the, most of the stuff he does. <laughs> Moving on to Masters of the Air. This is the Austin Butler project. Indeed, it is miniseries, right? Miniseries. You're on so right. What streaming platform? Guess. Apple TV. Yo, man, three for three. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it looks great. It looks really good. It, look, it, it does showcase Austin's the lead for sure of the of the series. The cast is excellent. CGI looks amazing. Um, it just looks really exciting. I love World War II films. Especially something like this with Spitfires and, and aerial battles. So it looks very exciting for anyone who's a fan of that kind of genre. This looks like the best project of the year for it. It's the 40th World War One, World War Two project Spielberg's produced. Really? No, I'm just oh, joking. Because <laughs> he's, he he's quite, old. He produces yeah, quite a few of them. It sounds about right. He's all over that genre. We got a new legacy sequel oh God. to a iconic franchise from the 80s, Beverly Hills Cop 4 trailer just dropped this is going to be a netflix release film and it looks like a netflix release film (laughs) (laughs) um any murphy's back is axel foley and i don't know how i feel about this trailer what is the title of this movie because the Beverly hills cop 4 it says that foley no no so so in the writing of the the posts on social media and on youtube it says beverly hills cop 4 but then in the trailer it says beverly hills cop axel f that's how the trailer ends that's the title because i remember so when you Google it, it says Beverly Hills Cop semicolon Axel Foley. That's a terrible name for it. It's a terrible name. Do you see how it ends? It says, oh wait, yeah, in IMDb it's Axel F. What Axel the F. Hell? That's it. That's the graphic. That's what the trailer ended with. Ended with a graphic. So they of, changed the title. So, Axel F. So the end is of the, the tra- title. Yeah, the end of the trailer it said Beverly Hills Cop, and then it wrote out Axel F. That is terrible. I'm like, who who greenlit that? Who said that was a good idea for a title? Just call it Beverly Hills Cop 4 and call it a day. Exactly. It's, I mean, the trailer, it's just like, it looks like a generic Netflix action movie with Eddie Murphy in it. It doesn't even feel like the same vibe at kind, all. It kind of does. They it have does, some of the old characters. Judge Reinhold is looking old. Yeah. They're He's, all looking old. Yeah. They're all looking and sounding old. Eddie's looking and sounding old. He's, He's still wearing the varsity jacket. He's got the varsity jacket. It's just sort of, 
uh, it doesn't feel like it has something new to say. Like Top Gun Maverick had something new to say or something new to do and change with the times. Yeah. There's a groundbreaking action film at the same time as a great legacy sequel. Yes. I mean, I saw, I just saw a red carpet interview with Murphy and he said, you know, the director was like, I want you, the director was like, can you still wear the varsity jacket? And he's like, you, you, Axel's still wearing the varsity jacket 30 years later? <laughs> and you're like, please, just we watched you wear the varsity jacket. And he's like, all right, fine. And then they're like, can you get your hair to look like it did back then? He's like, when I was 23? No, I can't. <laughs> I can't get it to look like that. <laughs> <laughs> just an IP cash grab. It, it feels like, it's what it feels like. It feels yeah, like an IP like. cash grab. Let's take an old name, an old character, uh, an aging actor, and just make an action movie out of it. It, it looks okay. It, it sounds like Eddie Murphy like doesn't want to be there when he's acting in the scenes it's, too what they also do is like it's a ton of action in the trailer a ton like it's machine like the, guns yeah. and shotguns they just like sold it with action and there's i don't even know what the movie's about and the thing with the beverly hills cop movies they had plenty of action sequences but it was a lot a lot of it was grounded and like it was just yeah. like simple things and yeah. like in a club or something like that and it just seems too in much in the club <laughs> like a fight in the club with a couple guns that's it not a, a heist with an armored truck and machine guns it's it like looked a, like a regular looked, tuesday for axel foley it looked like bad boys four yeah it did look like honestly <laughs> <laughs> speaking of fours we got another trailer of a fourth film in this franchise but that's what makes more sense it's kung fu panda four and this time viola davis joins the cast looks like a lot of fun looks really great animation like all the other kung fu panda movies and jack black just being jack black it, this looks like a good time. Everyone's back. It looks good. Yeah. And then what's Miller's Girl? Miller's Girl is the upcoming Martin Freeman and Jenna Ortega film. Oh, that's right. So Martin Freeman plays her college professor, and they start this relationship. And start the lines are getting blurred between student and f- pupil. Pu- Student and, and, and teacher. Teacher. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> but then the whole trailer is like he's trying not to. and But she's. it seems to be like she's tr- the one trying to incite it. And then things, it looks like it fucks up his life. She's on fire right now. She's in a bunch of projects. Yeah, it looks interesting. She just is yeah. in, she's in a movie that, with Tommy Lee Jones that just came out. And Ben Foster. And it's a Boston movie. It's a Boston movie about Fisher people. But Fisher there's men. no Boston accents in the trailer except <laughs> for one enough? guy's like, get in the car. Like <laughs> <laughs> The accents are not there. There's like four people doing southern accents. I'm like, what is going on in this movie? I didn't see the trailer, but I saw a pic, an image of it. it. It looks okay. Not even Foster was doing a Boston no, accent. No, it wasn't in a Boston accent at all. He could do it. Easily. I guess not. Tommy Lee Jones just sounds like Southern Tommy Lee Jones. He's like 95. He's, he's, just, like, he's just like, I need to pay for more f- for another house. Or something. I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> I'm like, what this is fuck? a Massachusetts movie. <laughs> oh my God. And it doesn't. I mean, have you seen, you've seen the trailer for Eileen, right? Yeah. With Anne Hathaway and Thomas McKenzie. Yeah. The Boston accents in that are horrible. Yeah. They're, They're okay. horrible. Even, even Anne. I was, I watched the trailer again um, in theaters yesterday. I was like, Anne. Uh, uh, even you, <laughs> the the accent's all over the place. I think that it's a harder accent than people think to pull off, and they should, you know, use some people to give them some advice. I mean, we'd be great, you know. I would say, uh, just don't do it if you can't pull it off, hundred percent. You should hit up Raiders of the Lost Podcast if yeah, you need some real. help. You know, if you need a consultant on a Boston accent, I mean, come on, guy, come on, kid. I didn't hear one person say kid. Well, I mean, <laughs> I wasn't just really kidding. thinking no, of the I'm just 50s. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant, I was talking about the Jared Ortega, Tommy Lee Jones one. Oh, okay. And there's a funny video where they're on the red carpet <laughs> together for the movie. And it came out? Yeah, it came. It's getting. What is it's this a movie? streaming movie. Oh, my God. I think it's Hulu, or I can't remember. And it's like Front Fire. I think that's what it's called, Front Fire. And they're on the, they're taking photos next to each other, and Tommy Lee Jones looks like he doesn't recognize her. And <laughs> oh people can you, the video can hear him saying, do we, were we in a scene together? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think Tommy's just phoning in. He's also old, so I think his memory's probably He's not really old. Incredible yeah. for being Finest kind. That's right. Okay, finest kind. Finest kind. It looks okay. It's about... So Tommy Jones plays a father who runs a ship, a fishing ship, and his son, while he's in the hospital, his son takes the ship out on an illegal uh, fishing trip in Canada where waters they're not allowed to fish at. And then the boat gets repossessed, and they have a $100,000 fine. So then his son has to figure out a way to save the ship and the boats. And Jenna Ortega's character suggests they smuggle drugs. And they oh, start damn. working with, I think, a cartel that flies and drops cocaine into cocaine. the ocean. And you, they pick it up and they become smugglers. Cocaine. Yeah. and Yeah, it's got a bad, very bad ratings. It looks, it's also, finest kind is just one word. Yeah. It, it looks no like sense. a movie for, for sure. It looks like a movie. How old is Tommy Lee Jones? 
He's got to be like 82, 83. He's really... 77. But also, the thing with Tommy Lee Jones, he's looked like he's 77 since he was 15. He has. He was, <laughs> his, the first movie, the, it was The Coal Miner's Daughter, I think is what it was. Um, and he's opposite... What's the actress? It was like in the 70s. And he played... He was like 21, but he looked like he was 40. It's insane. I mean, when you come out the womb smoking cigarettes, probably. Or it's just like he's an old-time man, you he's know? He's got that old, that grizzled face. Yeah, he's, he's just always been like that. And also, people looked... I mean, you know all that stuff about people looked older back then? Yeah. Like, you, people don't think... Factor in, like, every room was a smoking room. Everybody smoked everywhere. Yeah. And so you were constantly exposed to smoke everywhere you went. And also, I don't think people were that aware of UV rays affecting your skin at all. And so people nobody, were smoking when they were pregnant and drinking yeah. booze still, like yeah. going on benders. People were people were throwing <laughs> oil on themselves to suntan. Oh, the baby's probably having a good time. Give me another cocktail. Yeah, so yeah, this health was terrible. So yeah, I think that's why they looked older. All right, we have a couple more stories that we have to get to. We have a, a sad bit of news. Uh, Andre Brower passed away at the age of 61. A beloved actor, comedic actor, and he starred on Brooklyn Nine-Nine as well as many other projects in it's sad to see someone go so young. I'm sure he had some other stuff in development. Yeah, he died from cancer. That's really unfortunate. Yeah, it's too bad. All right, moving on to some Tarantino news. I'm going to say the title, but you're going to have to read this up. My voice can't take it. So let me uh, read the title. The, uh, J- Jimmy, let me read the title, and then you can take over. <laughs> so the co-writer of his Star Trek movie, Mark L. Smith, actually came out with some exclusive details on it, and he called it a balls-out, hard-R movie. So take it away, James. Take, Take it, it away, away Earl. Earl. <laughs> <It's> Earl. <laughs> <laughs> it would be the greatest Star Trek film. Just for what Tarantino was going to do with it, it was just a balls-out kind of thing. It was a different thing, but this was such a particular different type of story that Quentin wanted to tell with it, and it fit my kind of sensibilities. So I wrote that. Quentin and I went back and forth. He was going to do some stuff on it, and then he started worrying about the number, his kind of unofficial number of films. I remember we were talking, and he goes, if I can just wrap my head around the idea of that Star Trek could be my last movie, the last thing I ever do, is this how I want to end it? And I think that was the bump he could never get across. So the script is still sitting there on his desk. I know he said a lot of nice things about it. I would love for it to happen. It's just one of those that I can't ever see happening. But it would be the greatest Star Trek film, not for my writing, but just for what Tarantino was going to do with it. It was just a balls out kind of thing. And I guess there's going to be a balls in the script. A ton of balls <laughs> because he said four times that it's a balls out thing. It's It was going to be a hard R Star Trek movie. That would have been sick. Yeah. And I mean, it's too bad. I, I would have loved to see that. Because to see like a huge studio picture from a major IP and give someone like Tarantino control to do whatever he wants with it, that sounds awesome. Plus, I don't, but I don't know if they'd ever do that. For him, yeah. He, that's his requirements for making movies. Yeah, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Where they ever, would Paramount be like, "Yeah, do whatever you yeah. want." I don't know, yes. man. I don't know. Yes, absolutely. I would love that, but I feel they wouldn't like... hire him if they they didn't, wouldn't say that. But did they hire him to write the script, or he just write it on his own? No, he. There was a whole pitch and everything, and they were on board with it. Yeah, but I doubt he got hired to like write a to do the movie. I don't know the contract details, James. So you well, you're to... acting like you do, Anthony. Well, he was. This is from the fucking co-writer of the film. Suddenly, your voice is is getting better. The screenplay was greenlit <laughs> by Paramount. I think they were hired to do it. <laughs> no, I wonder if they were just like, yeah, go ahead, Tarantino, write something, <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Shut up. Have some fun, bro. Get out of here. All right, moving on to the next story. We have a great casting. So George Clooney and Adam Sandler have just been announced to star in Noah Baumbach's upcoming film. Adam Sandler started in a couple of his recent adapta- his recent films. Clooney will be a first-time collaborator with Bombach. There's no details on the story, and there's no title on the film at all, but I'm just very excited. It's going to be a Netflix film as well. Them two together in a movie? That's awesome. Sounds great. Yeah, they never worked together, right? Never. Never? Not that I can think of. Very, very cool. Moving on, next to, speaking of Noam Bombach, his partner Greta Gerwig has been named the Cannes Jury President for... 2024's festival smart choice very exciting stuff very cool she's after a 15 lady. year 20 year career she is just at the peak and at the top of the mountain in hollywood right now so it's an awesome choice and our final bit of news is from oh lionsgate and you thought saw was over no baby saw 11 is set for fall 2024 from lionsgate the studio set the date for it as september 27th 24 2024 and this is just going to be the first of many, I'm sure. Many more. Imagine if this goes to like 26. It will. We're going to be like 46. 
Saw 27 is going to be in theaters. We're going to be like, great, another one. And they're sticking with the Roman numerals, too. Might they're as well. Do- XI. Saw XI. It looks better than 11. Why not 11? It just looks way better. Does it? Yeah, I think so from a marketing standpoint. Because I feel like 11 would put people off. Like, oh, but, but the Roman numerals, it's like, it's cooler. It's X prestige. Is sexy. Yeah, prestige, man. <laughs> It's all about perception. <laughs> I'm not sure about the Roman numeral for 11. I, I think know. it works better. <laughs> it's, just, it's like they every year now. It's nuts. Every year. Like that one. People 10, see them. 10 just came out. People see them. And I mean, Twisted Pictures got to keep that money flowing. That's how they make their money. They only make the Saw movies. That's true, man. That's all they do. <laughs> and they've been killing it for 20 years. And Lionsgate, you know, they're like, they got a, they got a little golden goose that just keeps laying eggs. They got a couple of golden gooses for sure, and this is one of them. They're, this is a they're fleecing that, that golden fleece, man. Guarantee, you got to keep the lights on. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, this is why so many IPs are being bought and remade and over and over again. It's consistent cash flow. It's just economics 101. Saw man. XI. <laughs> XI. <laughs> All right, everybody. That wraps our movie news episode this week. Episodes last week, we had some bangers. We did American Pie on Monday. On Wednesday, we did a great episode on... Godzilla, Godzilla minus one. Godzilla, minus one. Sorry. That's what I just said. <laughs> we got a fucking echo in here. What? <laughs> Why don't you go smoke your ciggies over there? Your cotton of cigarettes. <laughs> I your, will. Your box of wine. Go go, go in the corner, Anthony. Upcoming episodes this week, like we said, tomorrow we have our episode on Wonka. Very exciting stuff. It was a terrific film. I hope you see it in theaters because we didn't had an absolute blast. And on Wednesday, we'll be doing an episode on... The Nightmare Before Christmas. Heck yeah. It's a great one. I can't believe it's almost Christmas. It's, yeah, it's fucking like the 19th today. We're getting there. I'm wearing my, my no, IMAX nice, Christmas yeah. sweater. It's a lovely gift from IMAX. It's a great gift. Yeah. yeah, it's got pockets for snacks. Maybe I'll wear it to the movies today and put some snacks in there. Do it, man. I think that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cozy. Throw all your peanut M&Ms in there. <laughs> Take them out of the bag and just dump them in there. I've been craving <laughs> so much chocolate since we saw Wonka. Like, all I want to eat is chocolate. Don't worry. We're having a holiday, holiday party tomorrow. You're going to eat all the chocolate you can dream of. Yes, I cannot wait. Anyways, thanks so much for tuning in. Become a patron today at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. You'll get access to weekly bonus episodes as well as the ad-free version of this show. If you didn't want to listen to ads during movie news, you could have just listened on Spotify and Patreon when you link them Screw together. Screw the ads, man. Screw the ads. Get that $5 also, Patreon. we got to pay the bill. So please listen to all the ads. We really need that engagement also leave those five star ratings and reviews on spotify apple Podcasts. share us with your family and friends is the best way for a podcast to grow organically word of mouth is integral to our show and just have a wonderful wonderful day see you next time thank you for watching raiders of the lost podcast be sure to hit that subscribe button hit the like button as well notifications for sure listen to the show on apple Podcasts, spotify everywhere you can listen to podcasts and be sure to check out this other content we have on our youtube channel